Candlelight and Soul Forever. A dream of you and me together. Say you believe it. Say you believe it. Go and listen to the lyrics and it's clear the Spice Girls wrote their hit song to become one as a homage to title unifications in professional wrestling. Honestly, it's true. I need some love like I've never needed love before. Want to make love to ya, baby? That's one belt talking to the other belt it wants to be unified too. It makes total sense. I'm Ross Tweddle from Cultaholic Wrestling, and because it has been one of the biggest topics in the world of professional wrestling so far in 2022, this is how every single proper big title unification in WWE history up until this very point went down. If you're watching this video in 2093, well, I don't know what to tell you, because I'll be 101 years of age then and also dead. Join us while you can. When the WCW United States Championship and the WWF Intercontinental Championship became one. Survivor Series 2001 was the night where the WWF battled the WCW and ECW alliance with the losers going out of business forever. This show saw a couple of unifications. Firstly, the WCW United States title and the WWF Intercontinental title became one thing after US Champion Edge passed a test by defeating IC Champion test. Edge did that by using the most devastating maneuver in all of professional wrestling, a fact that still stands today of course, the roll-up. He did that to win the big one. And before the match by the way, Edge took the piss out of Test's Canadian accent, even though Edge himself presumably says what's all that about too, because he's from that bizarro land up there as well, you know. Anyway, Edge didn't keep his WCW US title because he was WWF through and through. So instead, the United States title was retired until Lady Balls herself, Stephanie McMahon, revived it and called upon its way uglier little brother in 2003, making it a SmackDown exclusive title as part of the inaugural brand split. When the WWF Tag Team titles and WCW Tag Team titles became one. Back to Survivor Series 2001 we go, as we also saw the Tag Team Cage match where Jeff Hardy put winning titles below doing something really cool, really gnarly, really radical dude in terms of importance. WWF WF Tag Team Champions The Hardy Boys battle WCW Tag Team Champions The Dudley Boys inside the four sides of Salad Steel. As we approached the end of the match, we saw Matt Hardy on the floor saying, Come on down, Jeffrey, you silly goose. Let's win the match, unify the tag team straps, and carry on with our day, old bean. Instead of doing that, however, Jeff did a swanton bomb off the top of the cage through a table with Devon Dudley moving out of the way at the last second. What a tit. What made things worse for Jeff and Team WWF was the fact that Bubba Ray Dudley pinned Jeff as a result of that silly dive off the top of the cage to unify those damn tag team Team titles. Luckily for Jeffrey Nero Hardy, his error in judgment wasn't too costly because Team WWF won the war and because the Dudleys were WWF through and through anyways, the Hardys WWF tag team titles, now owned by Bubba and Devon of course, were the titles and the lineage that survived this unification. When the world title in brackets the WCW Championship and the WWF Championship became one. Later that year at Vengeance, and I don't know if you've heard this one before, so sit down just in case you haven't, but Chris Jericho defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in the same night. He's never mentioned it since, in fact nobody has. I'm actually the first one. Have you fainted? Oh, you haven't. Let's continue. You see, at Vengeance, there was a little title unification tournament. First of all, Stone Cold retained his WWF title by seeing off Kurt Angle. Then, Chris Jericho took advantage of Vince McMahon's presence in the ring to whack the people's strudel. That's the Rock's winky. And hit a rock bottom to win the WCW title, which by that point was known as the world title in WWF canon. And then immediately after that, Austin was back down to the ring to face Jericho and the unthinkable happened. Booker T got involved and allowed Jericho to win the match and walk away from vengeance as the undisputed champion as Vince McMahon laughed his muscle tits off at the top of the ramp. Jericho would hold the titles through to WrestleMania 18 where he lost the main event that should never have been the main event to Triple A. And then the one belt version would make its debut on April the 1st, 2002. 
when the European Championship and Intercontinental Championship became one. On to July of 2002 we go now, as the European Championship was unified with the Intercontinental title when IC champ Rob Van Dam defeated European champion Jeff Hardy on Raw in a ladder match. And this particular unification wasn't done in a cool way like when Kurt Angle, D'Lo Brown or Jeff Jarrett were Eurocontinental champions. Oh no! After five and a bit years of life, the European Championship was abandoned and never heard from again. And by the way, the spot that sets up the splash Van Damme did to knock out Jeff sufficiently enough to climb the ladder and retrieve the IC title was all kinds of foie. Jeff floated and flipped through the air like a plastic bag full of bricks when the Hardcore Championship and Intercontinental Championship became one. In August of 2002, we saw the Hardcore title unified with the Intercontinental title when once again, RVD, who was clearly on a tear in 2002, pinned Hardcore Champion Tommy Dreamer because EC Derb, EC Derb, EC Derb. Dreamer came into this match with that weird version of the Hardcore title, which is a weird thing to say when the OG design of the Hardcore title was so weird to begin with. You might remember this one though, as it appeared Tommy stole a number plate and glued it to the European Championship that Van Damme retired a month earlier in that unification ladder match with Jeff Hardy. This and JBL's short-lived Texas Hardcore title were brought about because the original belt had become so damaged from wear and tear it couldn't possibly be used on television. Imagine that man, too damaged to use on TV, it was flimsier and dirtier than a soggy biscuit when it was brand new. This wasn't the end of the Hardcore Hardcore title in WWE, however, as in June of 2003, Stone Cold Steve Austin awarded Mick Foley with the title, but not the title belt due to his contributions to hardcore wrestling. And then Foley brought the thing back once more in 2006, as he and Edge declared themselves the co-hardcore champions as part of their storyline on the way to ECW One Night Stand 2006. The title wasn't defended, however, and soon it was put back into the retirement home. When the Intercontinental Championship and World Heavyweight Championship became one, on. The new Intercontinental Championship was unified with the World Heavyweight Championship at No Mercy in 2002 when Kane tried to play the game but ended up getting wasted like on the Grand Theft Auto but not quite as dead as that, if that makes any sense. Come to mention it, I actually wish I perished during this storyline, because this is the one where we got to know about Katie Vick. We were even lucky enough to see Triple H wear a Kane mask while humping a fake dead body in a coffin, all because Kane said he was somewhat responsible for the death of his friend Katie in a car accident, and was the one driving the car home at the time because she had had too much to drink. But then Triple H said Katie's autopsy also found traces of Kane. Kane Seaman isn't wrestling fantastic, which meant he wasn't just the one to blame, but was also a necrophiliac, brother. World heavyweight champion and chief investigator of the Connecticut police, Triple H, thanks to utter bollocks involving ref bumps, dirty old Ric Flair, and a valiant hurricane who tried to save the day for his masked pal, pinned the IC champion Big Red Machine, meaning the fabled Intercontinental Championship was put into retirement. Why the hell did that happen, and who the hell allowed this to happen. This was the Intercontinental Championship when it was still everything it claimed to be, and before it went all soft and shy in the modern day. The decision was unbelievable. Thankfully, the Intercontinental Championship was revived seven months later by Raw co-general manager Stone Cold Steve Austin, who clearly is a very sensible man. When the WWE Tag Team Titles and WWE World Tag Team Titles became one, we would have to wait almost seven years for another unification in the WWE as Carlito and Primo Colon defeated The Miz and John Morrison to unify the WWE World and WWE Tag Team titles. With such a long time waiting for a unification bout in WWE, and with this one being WrestleMania's 25th anniversary, quiet you and your knowledge of how dates actually work, this was sure to be one of the major selling points of the night. No, was it bollocks? Vince McMahon and his cronies couldn't give the slightest hairy ballock about tag team wrestling, so this monumental happening took place in a pre-match lumberjack tag team match. Primo won the match for the Colognes with a backstabber on Morrison. Apparently, I've not seen the end of the match. The only footage I could find was a WWF shorties video on YouTube, which only shows the Colognes entrance and a little bit of the opening portion of the match. Of course, both sets of titles and the unified name would stick around until the summer of 2010 before the unified was dropped and we got some lovely massive pennies to fawn over. Over. And of course, because Vince McMahon hates old things, the younger WWE Tag Team Championships brought into the company to be on SmackDown after the inaugural brand split in 2002 were the titles and the lineage to survive this unification. 
when the WWE Women's and WWE Divas Championships became one. Night of Champions was the setting for this one, where Divas Champion Melina faced one half of the self-proclaimed women's champions, Michelle McCool, in a Lumberjill match. On the SmackDown before the pay-per-view, McCool did some hijinks, according to Matt Stryker, to represent Lay Cool in the match, which isn't even fair right, because Layla was the one to initially win the title, so it really should have been her in the match. Miss Yonard, enough for me, ended up winning the match thanks in part to an interference from Layla while she was getting battered on the outside by the Jills. Back in the ring, Michelle got one big boot later and bon appetit. Following the match, the women's title, which had been so wonderfully cracked in half by Lay Cool, of course, was retired after 54 years of service. And that horrible butterfly thing was known as the Unified WWE Divas Championship for a little while before the first bit was chopped off. When the World Heavyweight Championship and WWE Championship became one. Over to 2013 we go now, and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship was born at TLC, as WWE Champ Randy Orton defeated World Heavyweight Champion John Cena in a TLC match. Yes, this was the match that saw Randy get a bit kinky and handcuff John Cena to the bottom rope. Insert five knuckle shuffle joke here, if you must. John unhooked the bottom turnbuckle, and after initially using it to his advantage, it would ultimately be his downfall, as Randy pulled him off, with Cena hitting his head on the table in the corner instead of his actual whole body going through the thing. By unifying both titles, Orton, as I mentioned earlier, became the WWE World Heavyweight Champion and basically the big gold belt and its lineage was put into the retirement home. Orton, the effing mark, would carry around both titles because of reasons. Daniel Bryan, who took the title off of Orton at WrestleMania 30, carried around two titles because he too must be one of those effing marks I'm hearing about. John Cena too, look at him, the biggest effing mark of the all. Then Brock Lesnar, of course, after that brutal win over Cena at SummerSlam, said bollocks to this, and the new title design that is still used here today in 2022 was introduced. And that title was made by Orange County Choppers in what is still considered by many to be one of the really ambitious crossovers you hear about in memes. The WWE World Heavyweight Championship reverted to being called the WWE Championship in mid-2016, after the brand split was reintroduced, and the title became exclusive to SmackDown. Raw and unveiled their own title, and that went really well for them. Honest, everyone loved the original Universal Championship. When the NXT North American Championship and Cruiserweight Championships became one. With the new brand split in full swing, we'd have to wait a fair old while and live through a bloody pandemic for the next unification in WWE as NXT came to the unification dance. With their own unification titillation, NXT 2.0 and its myriad of colours and gimmicks saw the death of the Cruiserweight Championship as it was swallowed up by the North American Championship after Carmelo Hayes defeated Roderick Strong. Obviously, after the era of the 205 live segments on Monday Night Raw ended, it always felt like the Cruiserweight title was on borrowed time in WWE. So in a way, it making it all the way through until 2022 was a great achievement. Like your granny, making it to 100 years of age, in many ways. Anyway, the A-Champ saw off Diamond Mine Strong Leader via some top rope buggery and his patented leaping leg drop off the top rope also. When the WWE Championship and Universal Championship became the oo-woo. From the A-Champ of NXT 2.0 to the A show of the professional wrestling year we go as Wrestlemania 38 saw Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns go at it once again with the Beast Incarnate's WWE title and the Tribal Chiefs Universal Championship up for grabs. As you might be aware, Roman Reigns managed to topple the Beast on this occasion despite appearing to see the middle upper part of his arm snap like a twig. It's out. My shoulder is out, said Reigns really calmly while Paul Heyman was going all kinds of biblical on his arse at ringside. Rise my Tribal Chief, rise, he said said. One final massive spear out of nowhere was enough for Reigns on this occasion, and he never faced Brock again. And Roman, after being made the literal centre of the WWE Universe, appeared on lots and lots of shows, and didn't revert to the schedule he used to lambast Brock Lesnar for having a few short years ago. When the Raw Tag Team titles and the SmackDown Tag Team titles became one. Sticking with Roman Reigns, his running of Friday night saw the Bloodline put into a position where they could hold practically all of the gold. Like gold member, minus the loose skin. The SmackDown Tag Team Champions Jimmy and Jey Uso were challenged by Raw Tag Team Champions RK Bro. And so it was set for the May 20th, 2022 edition of, as Pat McAfee might call it, SmackDown. Everything was on the line, title unification ting. The 
finish of the match saw Roman Reigns hold on to Jey Uso's leg while Riddle was attempting a super RKO off the top rope. With Riddle now down on the mat, Jey hit a splash and the Usos held both sets of tag team titles in the WWE. When NXT 2.0 and NXT UK became one. September the 4th, 2022 is a night none of us will ever forget. Unless you hated NXT 2.0 and everything it stood for. In which case, I doubt you even knew it happened before watching this here video. The announcement that the NXT UK Performance Centre was shutting down and NXT Europe was coming in 2023 because, according to that sexy granddaddy himself, Shawn Michaels, WWE believed this is the perfect time to expand NXT beyond the UK. Every title across both brands was unified at the World's Collide event. NXT Tag Team Champions The Creed Brothers, NXT UK Tag Team Champions Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen, The Pretty Deadly Buys and Gallus battled for the right to leave the Capital Wrestling Centre as the undisputed Tag Team Champions of the brand in a fatal four-way elimination match. Thanks to a shocking betrayal from Diamond Mine member Damon Kemp, it was Kit Wilson and Elton Prince who came out on top to take all of the gold. Yas Buys! Mandy Rose unified her NXT Women's Championship with Mako Satomura's NXT UK Women's Championship in a three-way that also involved Blair Davenport. Rose, the longest reigning NXT Women's Champion since 2018, rocked Davenport with a kiss from a Rose for the win in that one. And finally, Bron Breaker and Tyler Bate fought for the lineage of their respective titles in the main event of the night. In a match that saw Bate looking increasingly likely to become the first UK representative to win on this particular card, Card, it was Breaker who came out on top to unify his NXT Championship with Bates' NXT UK Championship thanks to a spear out of nowhere.